package from love to taxes. They're going to be cut for hospitality businesses today. There's a question, though, about whether or not the savings are going to be passed on to punters. Sean's taking a look at this. Morning. Um, Morning. I was just looking, I'm sure we've all had lots of comments. Charlie has just said, Charlie Ross on Twitter, I'm 100% happy for businesses to use the VAT cut to support themselves and get back on track, not remotely interested in getting a discount. Right. So there's, there's lots of people who are buying into those who can afford it yeah. to, to not take the cut. And that's why different businesses will have a different decision to make based on their situation. Uh, morning, everybody. Uh, this was one of those major announcements from uh, the Chancellor last week in the summer statement where he said quite a few measures that he hoped would get the hospitality industry moving again and, and a big one was this cut in VAT, value-added tax, this tax paid by us consumers when we buy goods and services. Uh, there are some items that are exempt like supermarket food or newspapers but uh, we're seeing some of those reductions kick in today. It's expected to cost the Treasury about £4 billion. Now, from today... This VAT cut will go all the way from 20%, where it uh, normally is at the minute, all the way down to 5% on things like food and non-alcoholic drinks, accommodation as well, admission to attractions like zoos and cinemas. And that will be in place all the way through the summer, through Christmas as well, until mid-January. So you can see why it might add up to billions of pounds of cost for the Treasury. What does it mean, though? Well, let's take this example. So uh, a pub meal for two costing 45 quid without alcohol would whittle its way down to about just under 40 quid, a saving of five pounds a couple would expect if you were getting that meal. Uh, but it needs that cut to be passed on. Because the tax is collected by businesses on behalf of the government, uh, businesses then decide whether to pass it on or keep it. So the likes of Nando's and Starbucks have said, yep, they'll pass on the full cut. But the Treasury said it's to help businesses survive. And uh, it's right that they choose what to do as they see fit. And we spoke to this independent coffee chain about their plans. Now more than ever, um, every business is trying to market and um, get their customers back and make them feel comfortable to come back and sit in and, and spend money on, on brunch and coffee. Um, our approach is to make it flexible, um, so it wouldn't be a, a blanket 15% across all our products. What it allows us to do is comfortably put on a larger discount, so we are passing it on, but I would say that it was more in a flexible approach that was under our control, um, depending on what sales are like in the coming months. Now, we've been in similar situations before. Back in 2008, after the financial crisis, nearly 80% of businesses passed on a VAT cut that was put in place then. Uh, but a bit different this time, there's this balancing act between getting more customers through the door and spending again and businesses trying to get as much cash into their coffers as quickly as possible to survive. So uh, keep an eye on, out today. You may see some businesses... Of course, there's an ad administrative issue for businesses mm. here as well. If you're a small menus. independent... Yeah, changing your menus. Mm. Some may decide not to do it or be more flexible like that coffee chain because of those changes. It's interesting. In contrast to what I told you earlier from Charlie, James says... He's going on holiday to Yorkshire and Cornwall. He wants the temporary reduced VAT cut passed on because it gives them more money to spend in the area on eating out. Yeah, it's both ways, good to see it? Charlie's up early watching the programme on Charlie a day he's not Ross, working. it was. And <laughs> oh, you know full okay. well Charlie's not morning, on Twitter. Morning, Charlie. <laughs> Charlie's not on Twitter either. Can uh, you imagine very wise. it? <laughs> very wise. That would be big news. Indeed. Yeah. <laughs> 10 to 8 is the time new service launches today to allow customers to reuse containers for big household brands for things like washing powder and tomato ketchup. Will it do the job that shoppers want it to? This is something that Sean has been taking a look at this morning. Morning, Sean. Yeah, morning. morning. It's the kind of thing lots of people might have done refills at their local stores, the zero waste stores, but going on to big brands, a bit of a different matter, isn't it? Morning, everybody. Yeah. So lots of people might be used to that, going to those smaller stores. But this new service uh, could see refilling become part of our big supermarket online shop. At the centre of it all is a company called Loop which is launching in the UK. It's an online platform and you can buy products in reusable packaging, have them refilled. Tesco have signed up to a trial with them, so you'll be able to get some products delivered to you. The containers get cleaned, collected, then cleaned and reused. Uh, and if it's successful, more supermarkets might get involved. And they're big brands involved, Coca-Cola, Persil Washing Up Liquid and Heinz Tomato Ketchup as well. And I'm joined now by Jojo Narona, who is the Northern Europe president at Kraft Heinz. Good morning to you. Good morning, Sean. How are you? I'm good, thank you. So, how easy will this be? People doing their weekly shop, whether it's online or, or in store, it's a big part of people's finances, takes a lot of time. Will it be straightforward to just include this in that? 
Yeah, very much so. And, and Sean, we're very excited for, for the tomato ketchup, beloved tomato ketchup in this country to be part of the loop trial. This is a first, initially a six months trial. It's going to be extremely easy for people to just buy our tomato ketchup online and then put the tomato ketchup back in the tote from Loop. Loop would then collect it, clean it, and then we're going to refill it in our in our factory in Poland and then send it back to consumers. But that, that process so might be, be easy in itself, but when you've got a lot of stuff going on in your personal life, you're doing a big shop, you get your ketchup as part of everything else. Now you're going to have to go through a different website and get a different delivery and different collections than your normal weekly shop. That doesn't seem to be making things easier. I think it's a start, and I think if we are all aiming to make this world a better world, we need to start somewhere. So for me, yes, of course, uh, Loop doesn't yet offer the whole range of products that you would buy on your weekly shop, but that's the aim. The aim is that we're going to be offering more and more products from Heinz, and I know a lot of other partners that are that are partnering with Loop are also going to be offering all of their other products so that shopping becomes easier. And potentially one day we can all do our products are shopping in refillable packaging. Can you give us an idea of, you know, over the next year, how many plastic bottles of ketchup you're going to be selling to UK customers compared to the number of reusable glass bottles that will be in place? So our glass bottles are today about 10% of our total, of our total uh, sales of uh, tomato ketchup. So we're only going to be starting with Loop, with the trial of Loop, and we're going to be selling about 1% of, of our total sales through Loop. But the aim is for us to be selling more and more of our glass bottles through Loop in the future. Because you know, a, a lot of people might, might see this as something that's a, a nice headline for the brands involved, that you're getting involved in something like this, but actually you're still producing a huge amount of plastic that can't be reused and is being thrown away every year. We have a very exciting project in place, Sean. So yes, of course, we're all starting somewhere. Uh, but our squeezy bottle, which is a plastic bottle you're mentioning, will hopefully be fully circular by 2022. So yes, uh, we are starting with Loop. And yes, consumers are going to be able to now use the refillable bottles through Loop. But in the future, we're going to be launching a fully circular plastic bottle, which is the squeezy bottle that you're probably very used to, to using. It's a convenient way of using your tomato ketchup. And by making that fully circular, we're also going to be helping make the world a better world. So I'm excited mean, for the project. Do you mean reusable? Fully circular. So you're going to be using uh, packaging that is going to be fully circular by 2022 on your squeezy bottle, which is um, the alternative tomato ketchup bottle. OK. But I just wonder, you, you know, part of your launch now is this you've made a bit of a thing about this octagonal glass bottle that uh, you get your ketchup in. Why can't the industry just have a uniform bottle size, a bit like our milk bottles, where they could all be reused across all different businesses and all different brands? We have to think of the convenience for consumers as well. So, of course, consumers are looking for sustainable packaging solutions. It's our responsibility to offer sustainable packaging solutions as well as convenient solutions for consumers. And our squeezy bottle is an extremely convenient solution because you can obviously measure how much, you're, how much ketchup you're putting on your plate. And our aim, as I said, is to make that uh, squeezy uh, bottle a uh, fully circular bottle by 2022, which is something we're very excited about. And again, it's important that we offer both convenient as well as, as sustainable solutions for consumers. Jojo Narona, thank you uh, for explaining all that uh, to us, the Northern Europe president of Kraft Heinz. It'd be a fascinating one to see how that trial goes, if customers yeah. are happy with it, and how it might expand over the coming years. Sean, 